We make room for you, Jesus. We make room for you, Jesus. Yes. That you would have a place that you can come and do whatever you want to do and move how you want to move. There could be a special resting place, Lord. We make ourselves available to you. I'm thankful that I have a voice that doesn't need a microphone. <laughs> so I lift up that voice, Lord Jesus. And I just say once more that we make room for you, Jesus. We want you to come in and to rest. We want you to bring those divine interruptions. That we may follow your agenda and follow your heart. Father, I thank you tonight. I thank you, Father, that on this Pentecost Sunday night, that your spirit is alive and well. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And we ask you that you would come and that you would rest. Yes, Lord. Yes. That you would abide. That you would take up your abode. Yes. Come, Lord. For not just a visitation, but a a habitation yes. Yes. of your spirit resting over this place. Yes. At any minute, Lord, you could come walking through that door. Yes. You could come in and your train could fill the temple. Yes. Yes. And so, Lord, we continue to constrain you to come and to welcome you yes. and to thank you yes. in Jesus precious name Amen. in Jesus precious name Amen, amen. 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 and amen. amen it's picking up my voice quite nicely <laughs> I have to pick it up <laughs> hallelujah I'm so excited about the future you know, we just don't come on Sunday nights and go, hey, let's just have another service. Hmm. All week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and especially on Sunday, I have this anticipation Amen. that God is going to do something so special Amen. that only he would be able to receive the glory. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so with that in mind, when we have these services, I'm expecting, there's an expectation that God's going to come with his fire and his smoke and his glory and his perfume. Yes. I've had enough of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was commenting to Brother Glenn back there. We were talking earlier. And I said that I've been in some places where there was no expectation that the Lord would come. And so we can get caught up in just church as usual or having meetings to have meetings. But what if we expected the Lord to come and to manifest himself? Amen. Amen. What if we believe that this chair is not just set there as a, a beautiful piece of art, but actually it was a, a welcoming tool? Amen. Amen. To constrain the Lord to come into refuge and to sit and to dwell yeah. and manifest himself. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So I want you to be praying. Yes. Because I believe that God has awesome plans for us. Amen. And not just refuge ministry, but Wayne County. Amen. And I know that he has plans for every city and every town, but I just want to speak into our immediate region here. Yes. Yeah. That he has plans. And so I want to I want to do what he is anointing rather than ask him to anoint what I'm doing. <laughs> Amen. What are you anointing, Lord? That's what I want to do. I want to be a part of that. No dead end roads. No wasting time. But Lord, let us find your heart and let us do it and run with all diligence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oasis Bible Training Center is being officially launched. Our website has now been completely revamped and ready to take on students' registrations. Wow. Applications have already been formed. All the tools and mechanisms are in place. School schedule has been laid out. All the organization behind it is done. And we are ready. Wow. Our first class starts Tuesday after Labor Day. Amen. We are going to have a three-day schedule Tuesday where we'll have three classes. Introduction to the Deeper Life. I'll be teaching that. The Life and Teachings of Christ. My dad will be teaching that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Ways of God by my good friends Steve and Terry Jones. Some of you might have met them under the tent. They come from Pinecrest and uh, they've been teaching for a number of years. They're coming on to be our first line of teachers. Hallelujah. Amen. Wednesday, we're having chapel. Amen. A big part of Oasis will be the chapel services where God can do what he wants to do. Yeah. You move. And then we're having a class about divine wisdom. And we're having a different teacher each week for that nine week class. So there'll be different teachers. Glenn is going to be teaching a class. Janae's going to be teaching a class. We have many teachers coming through for that. And then the third and last chapel service is on Sunday nights called Holy Fire. Amen. <laughs> It's already full in here and no students have yet arrived. <laughs> so I, I don't know, we're just going to plan it and not worry about how it's all going to work out. We're just planning it by faith and if we need to uh, go outside and meet, we'll just do that. If they won't let us put up our tent, we'll just meet outside in the parking lot, praise the Lord, until we can get something else going on. So spread the word. I'm going to talk more about that as the weeks go by. Saturday, guess what? We are doing at 10.30 in the morning. The Refuge Gathering. Yeah. What is the difference between the Refuge Gathering and Sunday nights? Well, just a little. Same spirit, same fire, same presence. Except we start at 10.30 in the morning. We do worship. There's a ministry of, of speaking, of course. But a fun part, at least, is the potluck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then we're going to have, my dad's going to share some, and Steve and Terry are coming to do some worship, and so Stephanie will be coming to do worship as well, so it's going to be a half a day, and it's going to be very exciting, so we want you to invite you to come out and experience a refuge gathering for yourself this Saturday, 1030. Ron, it's your turn, brother. <laughs> Amen. Use your preacher voice. <laughs> You mean my outside voice for the kids when they're out of hand? Is this working? Yeah. Is this still turned way up? I think it's stick. Yeah, just keep talking. Yeah, it's, it's number one and number two slides. And then there's a black knob in the back. I'm going to pull this way down. <laughs> How's that? Are my arms long enough? <laughs> That's, That's right. <laughs> If, if the reflection off of his shirt and my forehead is too much, I'm sorry. My prayer is the offering. Take up the offering. The word 
that's been on my heart today and, and a good chunk of the weekend has been legacy. It's interesting that Steve's first words out of his mouth when he came back up here was future. Uh, Oasis Bible Training Center is coming. And, and speaking for myself, I'm not going to be here forever. So there will be a point in time when I leave this tent, what will my legacy be? My hope and my prayer is that it will be some investment in Oasis. That whether it's money, time, whatever it is, it will be an investment into the future of those that are going to take the gospel all over the world. Amen. Places I've never been, places I've never heard of. I've heard some of the stories from Steve and some of the others from Pinecrest, places they've been, gone, uh, and they are just amazing adventures. Mine was different, and theirs was different too. Uh, and that, that's what we that's what we raise funds for. Can I give you a job when you're done playing? <laughs> <laughs> but legacy, that, that's important. What, what are we doing with our future? And when we're gone, what is the future gonna hold? One of my favorite sayings is that at some point in life, a gentleman walked up and he put his hand on the shoulder of a young man that came forward to the altar and he prayed with Billy Graham, not knowing what was gonna to happen to that young man when he took his hand off. None of us know that. So whatever our investment in, in, in Oasis is, whether it's finances, whether it's time, work, um, sweat, putting a tent up, what is our legacy? The other thing that's been on my heart, because this is going to take a minute for him to get around, um, I believe it's Revelation 2. In the vision, Jesus is talking to the church at Ephesus, and he, he's patting them on the back like a big dog. You guys are doing great. You, you, you speak, speak the word, you preach, you, you spot someone who says they're an apostle and they're not, and you just confront them. And all these things you're doing, add a boy. But the one thing I have against you is you've abandoned your first love. Amen. And that's a question that's always on my heart. When I am working through things and I get busy, super busy, we all get busy. We have work, we have children, we have grandchildren, we have houses, we have things that have to get done. Is Jesus my first love at all times? Is he on my mind, on my heart, in my speech? Wherever I go, whatever I do. And he's asking that of us. Is he our first love? Thanks, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray. Let's pray for the offering. Father, I thank you that, that we've come together to honor you, to worship you, to lift you up. I pray now that you bless this offering. It's all yours anyways, Lord. I pray that you multiply it. You use it for your glory, for this building, for this, this ministry, for this school, school and, and the students that are coming. And you're going to create a, just, a, just a, a future and a legacy here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. So six months ago, Dad and I went to the doctor, and the doctor said that uh, you have cancer with six months to live. And that was a... Uh, exceedingly and abundantly difficult for my sister and I having just lost her mom about 14, 15 months ago. And they gave him six months and about a few weeks ago, it was, we were three months in and went, recently went to the doctor not long ago and they said that you've gotten steadily worse and wants him to start um, up on hospice. And I believe that God heals today. Amen. And I'm looking for some people that will stand in faith 
with me. And I'm going to pray faith and I'm going to speak faith until God takes him. When God brings him home, then we have our answer. But until then, I'm going to speak faith. I'm going to speak faith. Hezekiah had his death date predicted to him by the prophet Isaiah. Hezekiah went to the Lord faced the wall. God had mercy and love and kindness on Hezekiah and gave him a 15 year extension. So God can give us extensions. I told my dad today as I was talking to him in his room, I said, I'm trusting for that Hezekiah extension because Oasis needs you and I need you. Nobody will ever know how much that my father has done behind the scenes, how much he's encouraged us to, to even start Oasis, to even come to Newark. To, sometimes I just needed somebody to come alongside of me and encourage me that I can do it Amen. through Christ who gives us strength. Amen. So we, we want him here. And so would you pray in faith with me and speak faith? Yes. Please don't come to me and tell me about all the different ones where God just took. I want to speak faith until God takes him. Yes. I want faith to be surrounding me right now. No yes. doubt. Faith. Yes. And believing that God can do it. Now if God takes him, then we're going to celebrate because he's walking in heaven with my mother. And I'm, I'm, I'll celebrate that. But until God takes him, let's speak faith. Yes. So every opportunity that we could give to my dad to speak, I think, is worthwhile. Yes. Yeah. And God gave him a word for tonight. So, Dad, would you come? Would you share? And I encouraged him to not feel bad if he needs to sit down. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. I want to sit down. He can sit down. I admire him that he's willing and he doesn't have energy to get up and speak. Hallelujah. I think you're looking very, very nice tonight, Dad. Hallelujah. It's almost like we're talking about somebody else. <laughs> yeah. You have a great smile, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's like it's uh, not even real. Basically, I I feel uh, weakness mostly, and uh, so when you pray, pray that with due respect. <laughs> God is so good. I want to. You'll never know how much it means to me that you folks are, are there and you're praying for me. How much you love, encourage, and strengthen. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that experience things like me, but you know, they don't handle the prayer support. That's true. So thank you so very much. Thank you so very much for praying, for believing with me. God can give me that 15 more years. Or <laughs> five more years. Amen. He knows I like to preach. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm thankful for my son and my daughter-in-law. They are so good to me, better than I deserve. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you tonight that you're so real. That you're almighty. And there's nothing too hard for you. I'm thankful, Father, that you love us, God, when we're unlovable. You understand us completely and you love us anyway. 
Father, you're so, so good. Father, I just give you praise and thanks tonight for your presence being here in this place, that we can experience you in a real way. Father, I thank you as I stand behind this pulpit, God, that you that you just touch me, Lord, to be able to, to speak forth, God, what you put in my heart. And I give you the praise and the thanks for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to be speaking out of Ephesians chapter 6 tonight. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, folks, we have a vision. We have a vision for Wayne County. <laughs> Represented here to, tonight is a, a mixture of different churches. But we have one vision. Instead of being, a, what can I say, not really, not really being able to trust one another. We have a trust. We have a, a bonding. And believe me, it's rare. There's not very many places where churches can get together and be of one accord. You know, I think, well, there's something going on behind the scenes. Maybe they're going to steal some of my sheep. Pastors have a hard time believing in other pastors because of what they're going to do. But you see, as I read these scriptures to you tonight, scripture says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might because it's a battle that's being waged. God has a, has a, has a plan and a purpose and a vision for this area, for Wayne County. And do you think the enemy is just going to sit back and say, oh, I'm just going to let him do it? <laughs> I'm just going to just call them. Oh, they're, they're, it doesn't matter. I'm just not going to give them any problems whatsoever. No, he's going to try his best to somehow bring some kind of division, some kind of problems into what we have here. This move of God, this move of the Spirit, this unity that we experience, this love we have for one another. Satan doesn't want this to happen. I want you to think with me just for a minute. The history of this area, the moves of God that have happened in this area, and Satan's been able to sneak in and steal that momentum, those moves of God. <laughs> Do you think he's up to the same tactics right now? Yeah. Absolutely. And unless we stay prayed up and put on the whole armor of God, 
I think one of the first ones that I want to put on is the helmet of salvation. Because that's where the enemy comes against you is in your mind. Putting thoughts in your mind. You have to be very careful what you think and what you dwell on. He'll tell you something. It might be just a look. And they'll say, I wonder what sister so-and-so. What was her problem? She, she looked at me kind of funny. And she might have been just having a bad day or had indigestion. <laughs> oh, hey, man. The battle wages against your mind every day and tries to tell you that you can't do it. It's impossible. Don't you know he's fighting me right now saying it's impossible? Amen. But there isn't anything impossible with God. Amen. We can do all things through Christ. Amen. Amen. Nothing's too hard for him. There's a mountain too high we can't climb. Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God to be able to stand. He says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So many times we think it's flesh and blood, but behind that flesh is spirit. A warfare in the spirit realm taking place all the time. When you go out into, your, into the world every week, you're battling against those powers, trying to discourage you or bring you down, cause you to think negatively. You have to be on your toes. You have to be, stay prayed up. You have to remember the vision that God has given us here for Wayne County. And stay united in prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's not about it's not about my agenda. It's not about your agenda. It's about God's agenda. Amen. Hallelujah. God definitely has a plan and a vision for this county. I have never in all of my years, and I'm going to be 83 in July, I've never seen the unity that I've seen in Wayne County. Never. There's always been these factions and things happening. And I've gone to ministerial associations, meetings. And you know what those pastors are talking about? Their computers and the browns are or, or, or the, the bills. And it's never about God. It's never about the things of the Spirit. But I haven't found that here. Amen. I talked to Brother Wes. It'll be about the Lord and what God is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. The other pastors, we have a vision, we have a desire to go on with God. Putting on the whole armor of God. Take up that whole armor, it says here, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. You're not going to be able to stand unless you put that armor on. Amen. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. The darts are coming. You need the breastplate. And have shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You need those shoes to walk all over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Above all, hang the shield of faith. Yeah. That you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts. The shield of faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing him by the word of God. Yeah. The shield of faith. Believe me, when, when the school starts, when Oasis begins, that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity for you to, to get weapons. Yes, amen. To get truth, to get it 
into your spirit. It's not about, you know, there's all kinds of schools. That's what's going to be so unique about Oasis. You can go to schools, all kinds of schools. They'll give you degrees. They'll give you head knowledge, a lot of things. But a school of the spirit has to do with finding out what God is saying and walking with him and being filled with the spirit and having the word of God in you, part of you. I don't know, but that's what I want to experience. Having that deep walk with Jesus. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and the powers of darkness. And then he goes on and says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. What kind of prayer is that? That's praying sometimes in tongues. But it's entering into it, a close encounter with the Holy Spirit of God. And you begin to touch heaven. And you know that you know that you're talking to the Almighty. And you know that you know that things are beginning to happen. You come up off your knees knowing that you've been with God. And you know that things are going to change. You, you have faith in your heart that God's going to answer the prayer that you prayed. Amen. Praying through. There used to be, that was something that you used to hear about praying through. Do you know what praying through is? It means when you get a hold of it and you begin to pray, you don't let go until... You feel the release. That's good. Amen. There's a release. And you know that you know that you know that you know that God is going to answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, you can do that. Yes. You can do that. Hallelujah. You can come into a place, a relationship with God, where you pray and you know that you know that God has answered prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God is so good. God is so good. God loves you so much. He wants that encounter with you. He wants that spiritual walk with you. He wants you to be able to walk in the Walmart and be communing with you all of our while you go grocery shopping. He doesn't want you to do, well, I'm going to go pray. I've got to find my place. You can pray all the time. You can have an onward conversation with God all the time. It's, you know, you think all the time, don't you? What do you think about? Stop for just a minute. What do you think about? Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I got this problem. Why not spend your thinking time praying? To Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Having an ongoing conversation with the Lord. Driving down the highway, shopping, whatever you're doing, talking to the Lord. And you feel that electricity, that feeling of knowing that He's with you. Having that overwhelming joy yes. the overwhelming loving yes. oh God is so good he wants that kind of a relationship yes. hallelujah. hallelujah praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints sometimes you're going to cry amen Sometimes you're going to get before the Lord and you're just going to cry. And you're going to just, you know what I mean? Oh, Jesus. Lord, I just love you so much. Father, move in my family. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. I claim my 
kids, Father. I claim my grandkids, Lord. Father, I thank you that you're going to give my daughter a prince for a husband. Lay hold of that, folks. Lay hold of that. They must they might just think they know who they want to marry. But God's got somebody special for each one of your kids and grandkids. Amen. Amen. Claim it. Stand on it. Believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God loves you. Just like you are. But he won't leave you like you are. Amen. Hallelujah. I have to say that I'm getting tired of here. But God is good. Amen. God is good. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would just move in the people. Lord, that the words that I've spoken tonight, Lord, would take root in their hearts. And they realize there is a warfare going on. Father, we would think of all the different colleges that were started by, by Christians, Father. Yale University, Father, and Harvard, and all these were started, and now, Lord, they're woke, and they're even Oberlin College, Father. Charles Finney, God, was president of that school. Today, you would never recognize it. Father, don't let that happen here. <laughs> Lord, we want to take back what the enemy has stolen in Jesus' name. Take it back, Father, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Have your people pray and see, God, in the, in the spirit that we can reclaim the land that the enemy has stolen in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Steve. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, well, <laughs> Hallelujah. We weren't able to live stream tonight. We've had all kinds of technical issues, but it did record onto the SD card of the camera. So I will upload that, and we are saving all of these messages and uploading them all to YouTube forevermore. Right. Amen. So that we can revert back to those messages from the heart. Amen. Amen. Pastor West, do you have anything you'd like to share tonight about Wayne County or what God's doing? And I would love to hear from Pastor West tonight. And I, I didn't warn him ahead of time that the instant in season and out of season, brother. <laughs> Amen. I love Pastor West. I consider him my pastor. He has backed us up and been here almost every Sunday night since January. Just missed just a few of them, because he was either on the mission field or had some other, he's always been here to support us. So I consider him a dear friend. So let's let's hear from him tonight. Thank the Lord. He doesn't know what he did. <laughs> First of all, I want to say, uh, Wayne County's a nice place to visit. <laughs> That's a good nice place to live, right? <laughs> Um, how many have a sense that God's up to something? I know that because you wouldn't be here if you didn't. Amen. This is something that's been going on for ongoing for years. Just it's been in its infancy. Yes. It's been yeah. it's been the desire of so many hearts, and it just could not happen. And now it's starting to happen. Amen. Yeah. I think that uh, that word tonight was very appropriate for where we are. You know, personally, on a personal level, yeah, we need to be in spiritual warfare every day, right? Yeah. But we don't. We're, we're just destined for our own failure. But the same thing with the church. The the uh, the success of the church in this area. I'm not talking about Cornerstone or Refuge or any. I'm talking about the church, Jesus Christ. Amen. That which we're all a part of. Um, 
I think that there's a certain, you know, God can do whatever he wants to do. He doesn't yeah. necessarily need us. Yeah. He's not sitting there all the time breathless like, oh my goodness, I, I'm not going to want, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> but I think that there's a, there's a, a, there's a simple thought there that, or a real, um, a basic fact that he's expecting something from us. Yeah. 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 And he's put it in our hearts that God, that he wants to do something here that's very special that we should begin to pray into that, into that direction. We should be able to take steps in that direction. With, at every opportunity, whether, like, and I love that, you know, whether it's at Walmart or wherever it happens to be, maybe this is a good place to start. <laughs> and then work on from there, right? But can you imagine, uh, this morning, somebody mentioned in our service about uh, transforming the city, taking back the city. I don't know if this is quite a city, but whatever, you know, the village, whatever the town, whatever it is here, God is about to do something big. Amen. It's already in the plans. It's already in the blueprints. It's a matter of just seeing it happen. And I, I really believe that we're at a time where when the church sticks together and stands with one voice and one purpose, that, that the things are going to be accomplished that he's head on the, on the uh, schedule for a long time. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Amen? So Lord, we, just, we agree with that. We, yeah. we agree with that fact of spiritual warfare that we heard about tonight already. Yeah. Lord, we thank you, Father, that Lord, you are uh, in complete control, Lord, and we want to stand in control in, in that same place of control that you are, Lord. Not that we would be in control, but you would, and we could stand on, under that umbrella, yeah. under your protection, protection yeah. in that sense, Lord. And we want to see these things happen that you already determined. Help us to get out of the way if we need to get out of the way. But Lord, help us to plunge in wherever, wherever we need to plunge in, Lord. Yes. We need to take down doors, take doors off their hinges yes. in, in a spiritual sense, Lord. Let's, Lord, help us to see those doors and begin to take the hinges off. Yes. Help us to move in, to move forward, to not be passive, but to be um, just exactly what you want us to be in this time, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. See, preachers can always share. Amen. Even if they don't know what they're going to say. Once they get up there and they start talking, it just like flows like water. Amen. Some preachers, like myself, the water just keeps flowing, and it doesn't know when to stop until my wife waves at me. <laughs> Now, I think we would do a great, a great in-service tonight if we did not ask Cynthia to come and play a song. Yeah. We're here. We have to hear at least one song. Amen. Amen. Do you appreciate Cynthia and David? your son in case he misbehaves. I muted them. So the mute buttons? No, no, not mute. <laughs> well, everyone knows I don't really need a microphone anymore. <laughs> that's on me, that's on me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Praise you, Lord. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, we give you all the yes. glory and the honor and the praise. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Y
Oh, we just humble ourselves before you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And Lord, we do put on the helmet of salvation. Yes. yes. And we do hold up the shield of faith. Yes, Father. Yes. Lord, we we ask that you would help us. Yes, Lord. Help us to put those things into practice on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Help us not to march into battle without being first proper, properly dressed for the occasion. Yes. yes. Lord, we just ask that you would just uh Help us, come alongside us, Lord, and help us to be prepared for the battle that's ahead. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus. We thank you that we know that in all things we are more than come. Yes. 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 So when we do go into battle, Lord, that you are right there with us and yes. that we are victorious in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to your name. Glory to your name.
that it would be fitting for us as a church and a ministry to pray for my dad again. He poured out his heart tonight. And I believe that as we pray by faith, that maybe this is the night that God will grant that extension. Amen. I don't know how long the extension will be, but I'll take any extension. Amen. So, Dad, if you're here, I'll have you sit down up here. to get as many that feel led to pray for him and I'm going to allow the body of Christ to, to pray. If you feel led to pray over him I know one person I want to pray is this man right here who's a walking miracle he should have been gone years ago Jesus 
Father, where, Lord, he feels tired and, and weak and weary, Lord God, that you would refill with your strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I pray for a renewing of his strength, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, in every way, God. God, would you pour out your love afresh upon him tonight, Lord. Let him know that you love him, God, and that you have plans to prosper him and not to harm him, to give him a future and a hope, Lord God. May his eyes and his heart be just so fixed on your love and finishing well, God, that, Lord God, when it's time to go home, Lord, that there will be no trace of sickness, no trace of disease, Father. I thank you that you'll give him the grace to finish everything that you've begun in him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help our unbelief, Lord, that we would have the faith, Lord, in the 
be able to move the mountains yes. and pray for you like that it would be done. In your name, because your name is power. Yes. You are the all glory and all honor is yours, Lord. Yes. Yes. Call upon your name. Yahshua. Yes. 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 Yes.